Let's be honest. There's been a lot that's happened in the DoorDash driver community since the summer. We've seen several new pilot programs roll out, some of which seemingly becoming permanent. And unfortunately, we've also seen a lot of bad information flooding YouTube about those programs. In this video, we're going to take a look at our acceptance rate on DoorDash and find out if it's more important now than it was six months ago. What is going on, everybody? My name is Zach. I hope you are doing well. Before we get into the video, if you are new here, please do consider pressing the like and subscribe button so you never miss news, tips, tricks, and ride-alongs with a healthy dose of humor. Before we get too far into the video, I'd like to take a moment and explain what I personally view as bad information. Recently, the DoorDash YouTube community has had several popular creators exploring different strategies and theories. Now, I'm certainly not against that, as long as they're being honest and transparent with their results. For example, my friend Gig Lebowski tried the Top Dasher program after qualifying with a 100% acceptance rate. He was completely transparent with the journey to get there, as well well as the kind of orders he received once he was a top dasher. Gig Lebowski did this experiment so he could report the results to us, honestly and transparently. That is an example of somebody doing something honest in the form of an experiment. But not everybody has the integrity that Gig Lebowski has. There are still those that are pushing debunked theories and out and out lies for the sake of getting a YouTube paycheck. When a content creator titles a video like The Death of Cherry Picking, that's going to garner more views, therefore making that creator more money. Keep in mind, all while pushing debunked theories. Clickbait is a common term that's thrown around YouTube. However, it isn't clickbait if the promises in the title and the thumbnail are followed through on. That is not what we're seeing on these channels. If I filmed a ride along and I called it Massive Money Monday, but it took me 12 hours to make $130, that would be clickbait. Now, of course, a good title and thumbnail are imperative for a video success on YouTube, but you can make a good video with an honest title and thumbnail without lying through your teeth and negatively impacting the income of those who watch you. I have zero sympathy for somebody who writes a completely clickbait title, lies to their viewers, and then pisses and moans that people are being mean to them. A quick read through the comment section of these various creators' channels will show that the claims made in the video were ineffective for the vast majority of the people that tried them. In my opinion, we as content creators have a responsibility to our viewers to be honest and transparent with them. After all, it is their livelihoods that we're talking about. Anyway, my point is, you had those that tried something new for the sake of an experiment, and then you have those that continue to push misinformation for the sake of padding their own wallets. I promise, you can still make money on YouTube without lying to people and negatively impacting the income of those who take your advice. Okay, that ended up being a little longer winded than I had planned, but I feel like it needed to be said. In this video, I'd like to correct some common misconceptions that I've heard a lot lately. We're going to play a little game called Fact or Fiction. Welcome to Fact or Fiction! Fact or Fiction. Top Dasher gives you higher paying orders. Fiction. Some of you may have seen a video I put out recently where I showed you in DoorDash's own words that being a Top Dasher does not give you higher paying orders. If you haven't seen that video yet, you should probably check it out. I'll pop up a link at the end of this video. Fact or fiction? You need to be a top dasher to take part in the large order program. Fiction. While the requirements are mostly the same, these are two separate programs and one is not dependent on the other. You can be a top dasher without being in the large order program, and you can also be in the large order program having never been a top dasher. Anyone telling you anything else hasn't done their research. Fact or fiction? You need a high acceptance rate to be accepted into the large order program. Fiction. Unlike Top Dasher or the High Pay Order Program, the Large Order Program does not have an acceptance rate requirement for entry into the program. So the next time you hear somebody drawing the comparison between Top Dasher and one of the aforementioned programs, just know that they have nothing to do with each other. Top Dasher, the High Pay Order Program, and the Large Order Program either have or have in the past claimed to give you access to higher paying orders. They've all essentially made the same claim, just with slightly different wording. Now that we know that Top Dasher does not give you better orders, we're left with two programs that are now claiming to give you the highest paying orders in your area. Those two being the High Pay Order Program and the Large Order Program. The High Pay Order Program makes the claim that drivers will get some of the highest paying orders in their area, but the Large Order Program claims that their orders can be two to three times the size of regular orders. So who is actually getting priority with these orders? Essentially, both of these programs are pretending to promise the drivers the same thing. After watching the Christopher Payne interview on the Rideshare Guys YouTube channel, I've drawn my own conclusion. And that conclusion is, the person who's going to get that order is the one that DoorDash thinks is going to deliver it the fastest. It doesn't matter if that driver is in either of those programs or not. If you do this work long enough, you too will eventually get a unicorn. Please remember, we're dealing with DoorDash. 
any promises that they make should always be viewed with a high level of skepticism. That attitude will protect you financially. I'd like to read you the benefits of the high pay order program and the large order program. Let's start with the large order program. High value orders often mean bigger tips. Orders in this program have the potential to pay two to three times as much as a regular order. Dashers will have to consistently maintain the qualification criteria below to be eligible for these high paying orders. Let's move on to the high pay order program. The listed benefit is, this limited time benefit will prioritize nearby qualifying dashers for high paying orders. Dashers with a customer rating of at least 4.5 and an acceptance rate of at least 50% get priority access, which increases the likelihood of seeing a high paying order. Dashers who have an acceptance rate of 70% will have even higher priority for high paying orders. Did you notice anything there? For the large order program, they use the words often and potential in plain English. The only claim that was made is that the customer may or may not tip more. Now, of course, if they ordered $100 worth of food versus 20, you're more likely to get a bigger tip. But DoorDash did not make the promise that they would send you offers with large customer tips. It doesn't matter how much food the customer ordered if they tip like shit. Again, the only promise that was made is that the customer may tip well. I wanna drill this home. This program is not making the guarantee that you're going to get high pay orders either. It's saying that you're more likely to get an order where they spent more than the average customer. At no point did they promise increased base pay or large customer tips. I'd also like to point out, recently there's been a large influx of drivers applying for the large order program. It's just a matter of time before that will be oversaturated as well. Your success in this program largely depends on your market, not your acceptance rate. Having said that, I don't feel like this program is a scam. So if your primary driving app is DoorDash, you should probably apply for it if you qualify. A moment ago, I talked about your market. We're gonna come back to that a little later. Let's move on to the language used in the benefits of the high pay order program, or as some are calling it, the diamond program. They use the words nearby and likelihood. I'd like to start with nearby. I've read the entire program summary a few times over the last several months, and at no point did they define what nearby means. Furthermore, the word likely is not indicative of a guarantee. If you're likely to get an order, that leaves the possibility of the driver waiting 200 feet from you with a 5% acceptance rate getting the same fucking order before you do. Now, in my opinion, this program is a fucking scam. So now that we've spoken some DoorDash ease, imagine going through life speaking to people in the way that DoorDash writes their program descriptions. You try telling your partner that you're going to a place to go have a few drinks with someone and you might be back soon. That's not descriptive at all and will likely start a fight. So when DoorDash uses words like nearby and likelihood, it's giving them an out to not deliver on what they're not actually promising to begin with. I wanna move past the wording and talk about what I have personally experienced in the high pay order program. I was invited to reset my acceptance rate in July when my market became one of the first in the country to get the program. Quick side note, they never did reset my acceptance rate. They just tossed me into the program. And man, let me tell you, I saw some massive orders on Uber Eats. DoorDash was still DoorDash with their high mileage, low paying offers. They were the exact same insultingly low pay offers that we are all used to seeing. There was just something new to look at in the form of a diamond when declining still shitty orders. Back when I took part in the program, they promised $2 a mile during delivery. They no longer make this claim. Now the claim is, is that you might receive some of the highest paying orders in your area. Now, like many of you, I've seen screenshots floating around YouTube and Reddit that showed diamond offers with huge payouts. Those orders seem to contradict everything that I'm saying in this video. However, when I see a screenshot that has a high enough payout to pique my interest, I get all sleuthy. Turns out, a large number of these orders are either coming out of California or New York. I've been seeing a lot of those screenshots from California lately. So why are the states that those orders are coming from relevant? Well, starting with California, they have Prop 22. When a driver gets an order, that offer includes Prop 22 pay. Therefore, DoorDash is legally required to pay drivers in the state of California more than they would pay almost anywhere else. It doesn't matter if you're a top dasher, in the high pay order program, in the large order program, or a cherry picker. Now let's go to New York. Props to New York for having total transparency. That means that if somebody orders through DoorDash and tips $20, nothing is gonna get hidden on that tip. If you're delivering in a major city, you're going to have more corporations that are placing large orders. And many of those corporations have tipping policies that are quite generous to the driver. So yeah, it makes sense to me that drivers in California and New York are gonna be posting screenshots of very lucrative offers. The next time you see a screenshot of a really good order on YouTube or Reddit, do some Googling and figure out what state that restaurant's in. This has been my very long-winded way of showing you that your acceptance rate isn't responsible for the orders that DoorDash sends you. So. 
If your acceptance rate is not going to get you better offers, then what good is a high acceptance rate? Well, it's good for DoorDash. It's good for cheap customers that don't respect our time enough to tip reasonably. It's good for mechanics, but it's not good for our car's trade-in value. It isn't good for drivers that choose not to set the precedent that customers that tip poorly are still going to get their order quickly. But most importantly, it isn't good for our bank accounts. Okay. This hasn't been entirely fair of me. Towards the beginning of the video, I said that your success in some of these programs depends on your market. Well, your acceptance rate won't give you better offers? Your market might. If you're a driver in Los Angeles, you stand a much better chance of seeing a $20 offer than somebody who drives in Tightwad, Missouri. And yes, that is a real place. Do you think that a town with a population of 64 people is going to have many restaurants? No. Do you think that there's going to be many companies ordering a bunch of food and tipping 20%? Also, no. The large order program is not going to spontaneously generate huge orders for you if you're in the middle of nowhere. Those orders don't just fall out of the fucking sky into our cars. Could you get lucky and get a high paying order in boring Oregon? Sure. But your chances of getting a very high paying order are much less than a driver in LA, New York, or Chicago. By the way, Boring Oregon is also a real place. Now, drivers in Boogertown, North Carolina are far more likely to see offers from fast food places rather than sit-down restaurants. Do I even need to say it at this point? Also a real place. Do you see what I'm getting at here? Your acceptance rate does not dictate the offers you receive. Your market and the demographic does. This is the exact reason I choose to wait for my orders here rather than at the mall. If I chose to wait at the mall, I would see far more offers from fast food places. And we all know that fast food places usually pay less. The time of day, day of the week, and time of the month also play a major role in the types of offers we're going to receive. If you're out driving in the middle of the month on a Friday night, you're probably going to see far more orders than you would if you were driving at lunch on Wednesday the 1st. A market like mine, for example, is more than half apartments. That means that the first of the month is going to leave the majority of my city with substantially less money than they had the week prior. Keep in mind, people do have to pay their rent, pay utilities, and buy groceries. I know that if I drive within the last few days of the month and the first few days of the new month, I'm going to see substantially fewer orders, but a lot more no-tip orders. That's just how it works in my market. Now, with all of that said, when does your acceptance rate matter? If you drive in a market where it's hard to get hours and you need to be a top dasher, I get it. Just make sure you know your expenses and be especially careful that you're actually turning a profit. If you're constantly having to accept offers that are less than $1 a mile and you're constantly having to wait in long lines, are you actually making money? At the end of the day, your acceptance rate has no impact on the offers you receive. Your market does. In the beginning, I asked if having a higher acceptance rate is more important now with the introduction of these various programs. The answer to that question is no. Well, that is going to about wrap up the video. If you haven't done so yet, please do consider pressing the like and subscribe button so you never miss news, tips, tricks, and ride-alongs with a healthy dose of humor. My name is Zach. Take care. You trying to be in a YouTube video? Oh, you trying to be in a YouTube video? Oh, ow! He killed me! Hey, stop it. Stop it. Quit. He doesn't want me to film a YouTube video.